Hey everyone. Um, in this video, we are going to create a GraphQL server using ExpressJS and the GraphQLJS modules. The GraphQLJS module um, allows you to define a GraphQL schema and mutations, queries, types, things like that, uh, all inside of JavaScript. And it's a great implementation. You should certainly check it out. And it's very popular on GitHub um, with nearly 7,000 stars. We'll also use Express to serve that GraphQL endpoint as well. Um, Express is just a tiny uh, minimalist framework for JavaScript. Uh, you can use things like Happy, JS, Koa, um, even Micro uh, by the guys at Zite. So, Definitely check that out if you're interested in maybe using a different framework to power your React app. Um, but for this video, we are going to use Express. So I've already created a folder. Um, I'm going to be using Atom and Hyper term, but uh, you know, use whatever you like. I've created a folder called GraphQL Server. I'm just going to add some dependencies here. Um, let's first initialize yarn and then add yarn add uh, Express. GraphQL and then Express GraphQL, which is just some middleware that ties them both together and allows you to create an endpoint. Um, with that done, what we should have now is a node modules directory, which is ignored uh, by uh, Git ignore. You don't want to push that to uh, GitHub, things like that. Uh, we have a package JSON and uh, yarn.lock. So inside of Atom, if we open the package JSON, you'll see our three dependencies listed here at their latest versions. Um, if you're watching this video in the future, you certainly want to maybe just use these um, explicit versions then um, so you don't run into any problems. But we'll go into more detail about the package JSON and what it does later because we will need a few things in there to get us up and running. So um, with that added, what I like to do is create a folder called source and I like to create a file inside of there called index.js. And this index.js is where I will export uh, our server and also start start our server, export the server um, and set up our GraphQL endpoint. Um, so we'll do that. We'll do that now. Um, we'll create Express and we'll require Express. Uh, we will create GraphQL um, HTTP middleware from Express GraphQL. And we also are going to import our schema, which we haven't created yet, um, but we're going to create a file called schema in a moment. We're going to also create um, uh, a constant called server, which just is going to initialize express so we can use that. And then inside of there, we will um, do all of the, the magic. Um, so we'll use uh, GraphQL. Um, that's going to be slash GraphQL, where we'll go to in our browser, um, GraphQL HTTP. Uh, we need the request, the response, and GraphQL. That's the um, the part of the middleware. The next part. Um, once we've got that, um, we can then um, export our schema, um, which is just here. Uh, we will create that in a second. Uh, do we want a pretty print? this uh, yes we do um, and also do we want to use graphical yes we do and so I have not true here what I like to do is just set this to um, dev and then we can create a variable called dev and what this allows us to do is create a and then, uh, an environment variable. Uh, we're going to check to see whether node, um, the node environment is in production. If it's not, then we assume we're in dev, so this will be true, and this will also be true. Um, Server.listen. Um, we will, um, whoops. We will create that. And what I also like to do here is run that on a particular port. Um, and then if there's an error, we want to throw that error. If 
there's not an error. Uh, we just want a console log um, ready on port port. Now this port hasn't been defined, and we'll do that here. Port is equal to process.env.port, or we'll give it a default of 5000. Cool, so that's pretty much all we need to do on the express side. Um, we're importing express, the GraphQL uh, middleware for express and our schema. We're creating a new server, we are mounting our GraphQL middleware on a particular route, and we're starting the server using server.listen. It's pretty standard stuff in the Node.js world. We'll next create a file called schema, and inside of here is where we'll define our, um, our uh, schema. <laughs> um, we are going to in, uh, import GraphQL schema and the GraphQL um, object type, and that is from the GraphQL module we uh, installed. Here uh, we will install queries. Um, we require the queries from our current directory. We're going to create a folder called queries in a sec. Um, for now, we're just going to handle um, queries and we are going to export um, a new GraphQL schema. And inside of here, we have to define query uh, as a new GraphQL object type. And then inside of here, we give it a name of query and fields are queries. Uh, we can do the same for mutations, we'll come back to that. Um, right now we're just going to create this file here. Um, so that's all we need for our base schema. We then need to create um, a file called queries, uh, for a file called index.js inside of a queries folder and it is inside of here that we will um, sort of define some, some queries. Now, we're just gonna create um, a, an, an example endpoint, um, an, an example query type, and we're gonna call this um, product um, in, for, for in this example. Um, or no, let's, let's, call it, um, let's call it events. Let's make a simple events website. That was quite fun. Um, so we're gonna require event and we need to export that um, event here. Um, this is ES2015, it's just the same as doing this. Um, we just need to export this once there. Um, so yeah, we now need to create the event file, event.js, and inside of here, we will place um, uh, GraphQL ID, GraphQL non null, and that is gonna come from GraphQL, and you'll see what these are used for in a sec. Um, we then need to import our, um, well actually, let, let's let's export this for now. Um, query type, uh, it's inside of here, we'll create a type, we need to call this uh, event type, we'll create this in a moment. Um, arguments, we are just going to get a particular um, event by ID, um, just kind of show you the arguments feature with this. Um, so inside of here we have ID, we'll give it a name of ID, and we will create a new type. That, well, this uses the type of GraphQL non-null of GraphQL ID. So our GraphQL ID is a ID type for um, GraphQL. If you're you know, it, it assumes that the, this, it could be a string. Um, the GraphQL ID um, is just a representation of something that GraphQL knows it's going to be an ID, um, but it could, be an, it could be an integer, it could be a string. It, it always treats as a string, I believe. Um, so those are, the, those are the arguments that we'll use. Um, we then, GraphQL expects to um, have a resolve um, function. And inside of here, um, it takes four parameters, the root value, um, which can be sort of, you know, you can build these query types on top of query types that, you know, the, the, the base schema can have a root value and you can access that via there. The arguments, the args here are um, what it's passed in and that allows us to 
sort of deal with this part here. And we have then context um, or options as it's now called, and then we have um, at the AST for our fields, what we what we're actually calling. But we won't use any of that at the moment. Um, what we will do is um, script function, uh, and this will just for now. I'm going to return a new promise. We're not using any of the the await async features at the moment. Um, we'll, we'll just stick to good old promises for now. Um, after we return that, um, we are going to um, for now just uh, we'll just resolve with uh, our object. So we'll give it an ID of. Um, it could be anything, it doesn't really matter. Um, and we'll give it a name. And this is going to be a um, uh, name of our event, which is launch party, and the date. Um, we'll just call it today for now. It doesn't have to be correct at the moment. Um, so this is just going to resolve. And if we were calling to a database and there was any errors, we just do a reject and we're passing our errors here. Um, but we'll We'll come into that a bit later. Um, for now, this is kind of what we've got here. Now, this event type, um, we're going to need to create a file for this. Um, and we'll just require this from types and events. So, um, types, and we'll call that event. And then inside of here, we will then create a event group type. Um, we need to do a few things here. Um, we need to export um, our GraphQL object type. And the name is event. That's the name of our type. And now the fields um, we define as ID. Uh, the type is a new GraphQL non-null. And that is GraphQL ID again. So this is telling the non null, it's basically telling that this is required. Um, because we're calling by ID in the arguments from before, this we, we don't expect this to ever be nil. Um, so this is what we need to use. Uh, the name of the event, we'll just say this is a GraphQL uh, string. And the date will be the same. We'll just use GraphQL string for now. Um, obviously, we need to import a few of those. So we'll import the GraphQL object type, uh, GraphQL non null, GraphQL ID, and the GraphQL string, and that is from GraphQL. Cool. So that's that file done. Um, we're pretty much at a stage now where our GraphQL schema is set up, and we can we can run it. Now, if we just run node uh, source, our app is running on port 5000. So if we open our browser and we go to port 5000 and go to slash GraphQL, we will see that um, if we open the docs here, this is graph graphical, uh, which we mounted um, inside of our uh, index.js file, we said on this path here to mount this middleware, graphical is enabled because we're in development. Uh, we're not in production, so that's true, and to pretty print it as well. Um, we can see we have a query type, an event. It, is, it needs a particular ID. Um, if we click on that, we'll see that the arguments required for this type is only ID. And then our actual event type has an ID, a name, and a date, and there a string and string, and an ID for the ID. Pretty simple stuff. Um, that's basically all you need. Now in GraphQL, to do a query, you can type query and then query braces here, or you can just do that. It's uh, exactly the same. And then event, we'll then pass event. It's got a capital E uh, for event because that's what we exported um, here when we imported it here. And that kind of gets passed down to the schema file, uh, the queries here. That's kind of why that works like that. The ID is the argument, and then here we're just going to pass in um, something random. It doesn't matter because we haven't said, oh, this ID must match this in the resolver. Um, we can just pass anything in. Now, if we grab the ID back, 
and the name and the date and hit run, we'll get the ID, a launch party and today. And that's what we hard coded um, from our event query here. So if we uh, change this, it will reflect in here. Um, so that's pretty much all that's going on. And if we just do that, you'll see it only returns this data here. Now, we've asked for this in a particular structure, event, the ID and name. So what we get back inside of our data attribute is event, ID and name. Kind of, that's really the real beauty of GraphQL is that you kind of can get the data response in the, in the way in which you ask for it. Um, so the request is kind of mirrored to the response uh, a little bit, um, which is quite nice. Um, so with that set up, that's kind of all we need to need to do for that. In the, uh, the next episode, we'll just um, implement uh, a database engine. Uh, we'll use Mongo and uh, MongoDB with Mongoose, and we'll make it so in our resolver, uh, this part here is actually going to the Mongoose database and saying, you know, get me this event by ID. Um, so it's all pretty cool stuff. Cool. So. That's it for this episode. Um, I'll see you in the next part, part two. Um, let me know what you think. If you've got any questions, um, drop me a comment. Don't forget to subscribe and reach out to me on Twitter. I'm at NoTrab, which is just Barton backwards. Um, so I look forward to seeing you over there. Have a great day and happy coding.